Greetings and welcome to all of you. First Virginia Avenue Missionary Baptist Church family, loved ones and friends that may have joined us uh, at this time. We bring you greetings and from Pastor Charles Henry Duncan Sr. as we begin the uh, preparation and the service for our midweek Bible study. As before, we'll be following the same pattern. We'll have a selection from the praise team. The deacons will present for us prayer and scripture. We'll have another selection. And then Deacon Larry Thomas will lead us in our study for this evening. We're delighted that you've joined us and we trust that your time with us here at our midweek Bible study will be one that is informative, enjo uh, enjoyable, and one that will allow you to grow closer to God. You are, or we are at worship as we begin our midweek Bible study. God bless.
Good evening, church family. Good evening to all of God's people. It's scripture and prayer time, and uh, I only pray, first of all, thank the Lord for bringing us all through another week. And I only pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we are able to sing and shout until you come down, because if we ever need you, dear Heavenly Father, we sure do need you now. A familiar passage of scripture, 100 Psalms. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And its truth endureth to all generations. I have read a fami very familiar passage, Psalms 100, verses uh, 1 through 5. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come forth this evening, we come as always. We give, come giving you all honor, all glory, and all praise. We come to Heavenly Father as always. We come to Heavenly Father thanking you just thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day, this day that we may lift our voices, sing praises, and just give you honor and glory. For you are worthy to be praised. And we, dear Heavenly Father, are just glad to do that. So we thank you for that opportunity. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for our church family. Dear Heavenly Father, First Virginia Avenue Missionary Baptist Church, under the leadership of Reverend Charles Duncan Sr. Dear Heavenly Father, we just continue to thank you for allowing him to lead us and guide us. And we just thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for allowing us to be soldiers on the battlefield of the Lord. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for allowing us to keep our eyes on the prize. And that's the high calling of Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that we just continue to love and treat each other in the way that we would want to be done ourselves. And we thank you, dear God, for continuing to lead us and guide us in the way that you have us to go. Now, Lord, we ask you to please forgive us of our many sins because we all have come short of your glory. As much as we try, dear Heavenly Father, we come short of your glory. But if it wasn't for your grace and your mercy, where would we be? For, for that, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Now, Lord, we ask you to continue to lead us and guide us we just pray to heaven and Father that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts please be accepted in thy sight. This is our prayer in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Everybody right, 
song is so true. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. To an all-wise God, our Father, we come once again to just come and get filled up in this midweek uh, Bible study. Father, we thank you for all of those, all of the participants and Father, we pray that you just continue to bless them as they continue to bless, continue to bless them in their efforts as they continue to stand here Wednesday after Wednesday yeah. to present your lessons. Father, we are so thankful for another opportunity and another day's journey. So Father, we just ask that you just come and sit with us and be a part of this service. Continue to lift us up where we are weak at, Father and continue to bless those that are having such a rough time. Father, we know that you are a great doctor, a healer that has never lost a case. So Father, just continue to bless those that are going through so much. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. All the people said, amen. So the lesson for Sunday comes from John 4, 46 through 54. The title is, The Word Heals. And in this lesson, believers that, believers that faith in God's words produces healing, I know and some, some others know that we can recall a time when our faith in God's word produced healing in one's life or in others. The Bible provides us his, this faithful account of Jesus' ministry, including his marvelous miracle working. Although most of the time he healed by touching persons, sometimes all he used was the power of his word. Yeah. With that word, he created and ordered the world in the beginning. With that word, he continued, he could continue to work of bringing order to chaos. And so we're going to begin John 4, verse 46 and 47. So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee, where he made the water and wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him 
that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. So here we see that Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee where he had turned the water into wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. The nobleman heard that Jesus had come from Judea and was traveling to Galilee. This official went over to Canaan, found Jesus, and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum with him, Capernaum, and to heal his son who was at death's door. The nobleman wasted no time presenting his request. With his son so close to death, he believed he needed Jesus closer. So he asked if Jesus would come down to his home in Capernaum. This is the father who is desperate because of his son so close to death. When the need is great, we are willing to go that extra mile. In case as such, God will provide himself to us. Christians should always practice coming to God as a first response rather than as a last resort during trials. He may not come when we call on him, but he's always on time. So verses 48, then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, <laughs> you will not believe. Signs and wonders. Jesus challenged the people's faith with these words. Except you see signs and wonders. You will not believe. Jesus' miracles are one of the primary means God uses to bring people to faith in him. They often lead people to follow Jesus and place their faith in him as the Messiah. So in verse 49... The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. He begging, he pleading. <laughs> the nobleman said unto him, Come down ere, pleading, or my son die. Jesus said unto him, Just Go thy way. Go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was going, he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. He must have been something about the way Jesus spoke those words that led to the nobleman to believe. Now the nobleman trusted. Jesus enough to leave and make the 15 mile journey back home. Even before seeing any proof of this miracle. But while he was on his journey, the servant met him and repeated Jesus' words almost exactly. Thy son liveth. God's word will never return void. So verses 52 and 53, then inquire he of them now when he began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour, roughly around two o'clock in Jewish time, in which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth and himself believed, and not only him, but his whole household believed. Everyone who was affected by the child's illness believed in Jesus because of the nobleman's testimony. Jesus' word brought healing, and the nobleman's word brought salvation. And so this is again the second miracle that Jesus did. When he was coming out of Judea into Galilee, first was turning water into wine. That was at the wedding. That was a joyous occasion. It was done to bless a husband and wife. 
And the second miracle was to heal the sick. So God promised that he would do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or think through the power that works in us. So by closing, I say we must just keep on believing that God will fix things. And finally, I will trust in the Lord until I die. So this is your lesson for this evening.
to say uh, thank you very much to Brother or Deacon Larry Thomas for bringing to us and leading us in our discussion Bible study tonight. And this book of John is one of my favorite books. Exciting things are in there with the miracles. And John calls these uh, miracles signs. And of course, I think uh, uh, Matthew and Luke uh, present them in his, his the words that he's presented. And of course, uh, the gospel of Mark, the action gospel, he explains it in, in, a, in a fashion as to what happened and the things that he did. John called them signs. He says he wants the world to know that this is the Son of God who, who mm -hmm. is uh, presenting these, doing these things. And it's exciting to understand and to see how he presents these miracles that, and he calls them signs. And then he talks about, he said that man wants a sign. In order to reach the hearts of people, we need to touch them where their point of intellect is in order for them to receive the messages that are there. And I, I'm not covering up on you there, Brother Larry, but it, it, one of the exciting parts about this particular lesson has to do with that verse uh, where, um, I think it's 48, or, well, after Jesus had told him, go thy way, thy son liveth, he didn't, he didn't go back home. He just continued on with his work because he believed what Jesus had said to him. And when our hearts are in tune with the master's heart and the things that he has for us, we're going to receive the blessings that God has for us, regardless of where we are and, and what we might do. And to, to accept the signs that uh, uh, were presented, the miracles as they're presented in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, John calls them signs to show that the people would know that this is the son of God that is doing these things. And then where is there any room for doubt? And this man, even though he wasn't a Hebrew, wasn't a believer as such, he accepted and went his way because he accepted exactly what Jesus had said to him. And then the exciting thing about that too was when he make the point about the fact that he's, he wanted to know when he got the word that his son lived, he wanted to know what time it happened. <laughs> and when they told him what time it was, that's exactly the moment when Jesus spoke it, when Jesus said it, it actually happened. He didn't have to go down there and touch him or to have a cadaver and all this stuff, but he, he just spoke the word and it happened. And for us to follow these patterns or these lessons that are presented to us, we can receive the blessing that God has for us, recognizing that uh, God only has to speak. It's not like when I speak, <laughs> you know, so that ties in beautifully with the subject for our study this coming Sunday, the word heals. You don't need the prescriptions from the pharmacy and you don't need the, the scalpel from the physician, just God's word and that solves all the things that are there. And we're thankful to God for that. And thank you, Brother Larry, for the presentation. Thank you, Brother Lipscomb and the, the men with the praise team group here this evening presenting to us the message in song. And we thank you, uh, Brother, where, where you go? Brother Alex, the always right there in front of me, and with the scripture and the prayer. And we're delighted to be here to be a part of what we prepared for our midweek Bible study here at First Virginia Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. And we trust that it has been a blessing to all of those that will hear that we will apply these principles and these things to our lives and to be ambassadors for the King. Uh, Pastor Duncan is present. You, do you have, you have something to say to us? Okay. Uh, this brings then to a close uh, our activities or the, the scheduled events for today. And as I said earlier, we trust that you've been blessed as a result of what has taken place as we've praised our God in song and prayer and scripture. And then the lesson uh, that we were led in to discuss with Brother or Deacon Larry Thomas. And we thank God for the opportunity that we have to be here one more time to launch this presentation for the First Virginia Avenue Missionary Baptist Church Midweek Bible Study. And we trust that you will all be blessed. So at this time, let's go for benediction and we'll dismiss for, our, for today. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity that you granted unto us 
to be in the house of worship one more time, to be able to join hands and hearts and minds together with these, the saints of God that have come here to make preparation uh, and to deliver the message in song, the message from the scriptures as they were read, the prayers that went up for all of us and for the lesson being presented and taught by Deacon Thomas. And as we've been able to fellowship one with the other, we feel that we are enriched and we have been blessed and strengthened in order that we can go forward because we have seen the evidence of a living savior who speaks things and they happen. So we thank you, Master, for all that you do for us. Continue to strengthen us, direct and protect us, and use us to your glory. And we forever give you the praise and we will forever give you the thanks. For it's in the powerful name of Jesus that we pray. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all until we meet again. And the congregation sings. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say